All right. Oh, and the meeting minutes. All right. Um, did this fail or is this LGTM failing again? Okay. The council test wasn't the last release, so I need to do my change log entry. Damn. All right. Oh. Come on. Go to the end of the page. This is the problem with these giant Google Doc uh, things. Um, let's see. All right. Okay, so we have a few things from last week that we didn't, or two weeks ago, that we didn't get the chance to finish talking about. Um, and... Um, 27th. I think we had a few things that looked like they were pretty much done here. So now uh, we'll start. Let's see. So the cash download stuff. Um, this looks like it was almost done, right? Um, uh, yeah, actually, there was another issue after uh, uh, we thought it was done uh, and it wasn't uh, popping up. So, yeah, I made those comments about it. Oh, weird. It took me a long time to uh, figure that one out. That's just nuts. What? That's so weird. This is a file. Yeah. I'm not sure, but uh, that's what I thought. Huh. And and so the file name that we'd used is oh, was this was the temp file being created with that at the end, or wait, was the file name? Uh, let's see. Returning absolute path now is uh, Okay, yeah, I thought this was because I saw we removed that absolute, and I was wondering what happened there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is great. Um, so. Uh, I removed it because uh, it was a string, but uh, I made it absolute. Uh, uh, with, before we make it a spring. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so extractor, extractor path. All right, so, so you return, so we return the absolute path, but it didn't care about the absolute path here. I'm sorry? Or right, let's see, the download path. So I'm just I'm just looking at because we had the download path as the absolute, and then it looks like. Um, yeah, we were uh, uh, before this. Uh, it, the download path was uh, a path, right? But now it's string. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you can't uh, absolute a string. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. So great. I'm returning. Uh, yeah, I'm returning the absolute path from the way back. Okay, because it cache download returns with string. Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, and cache yeah. download. Um, I'll do. Okay, yeah, and cache down already. It already turns returns the absolute path. Okay, great, great, fantastic. All right. Um, and well, let's see. So now I'm seeing. Okay, and cache download. Did it okay? Yeah, it doesn't declare what type it is. Okay, I'm wondering should we this returns now? I'm just looking at this again. I'm, I'm thinking if this returns a path object here, so it looks like a cache download returns a path object. Um, then we should probably return a path lived out path object from, or if unpack archive returns a path object, we should probably return a path object from, uh, from cache download as well. Let's see, because we do, we shouldn't, we don't want to, we don't want to mix the two, you know. Let's see, because um, yeah, this guy will return this right now before 
What did it do before? Um, so previously, okay, previously it also was a pathlet.path object. So we should probably maintain, let's maintain that. Uh, yeah, let's maintain its status as a pathlet.path object just because we end up using those so many times uh, that, you know, having the first call after the returned value be, you know, create a pathlib.path object out of this string um, will reduce, you know, it'll reduce code we write in the future. So let's just say. All right. Okay. Thanks. Um, I'll just say it looks like uh, we previously had cached download. Um, <clears throat> so we previously had cached download, uh, giving a path 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 object. Um, let's maintain that. Um, and this, let's see, this function didn't, did this even do anything? Like, what was this doing before? Was this even, oops. So this returned, let's think URL retrieve. Oh, this doesn't even do anything with it because it has a, okay, and this had a target path. Um, and it was given the target path. Okay, so this one. Okay, so this one is given the target path. And let's see. And so it knows where it's downloading. So here, when we do cache download file path. Okay, wait a minute, but this is. Think you're over to your path, target path. Okay, yes, yeah, so. Yeah, okay, so the function signature for this takes target path. Yeah, okay, so yeah, let's. Let's just, yeah, let's just make sure that this is still a pathlib object. Uh, for both the functions, right? Uh, yeah, for both the functions, because I think you're, you're going to just, you just return, you, you return sync URL, retrieve and validate, because um, I think before, like within the last change, say you had like file name equals sync URL, retrieve and validate, and then return file name. Um, and I think we just changed that to one statement. Um, but either way, that will, we need to, yeah, let's just maintain it as a pathlib object. And I think if you just change it with sync URL, retrieve, and validate, because it, it'll end up basically just returning the same target path that it was passed, right? Um, so it's not, yeah, it's just, it's, just, it's almost just like a shortcut for return target path, you know? Um, it's almost like a shortcut for just saying sync URL, retrieve, and validate, and then return target path if we just return the same target path from uh, retrieve and validate, um, which would just be this. Um, cool. Um, I wonder, yeah, I think I don't think anything much will need to even change here. And so this is really funny. So it didn't recognize zip as a file when using ch to a directory path. Okay. In directory path, okay, and we didn't have to do absolute on that. So I'm back down to directory path. Because where did we ch? Oh, okay, because we had a ch. We had a ch there before. Um. Yeah, I had to remove that and oh, uh, I pass see. the path directly I to see. unpack archive. Okay. And that does that that does end up with the correct structure then? 
Yeah, I okay. I tried it locally, and the CI also passes now, so, so I think great. so. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, because that that because um yeah, you would it would have broken these guys if it didn't end up with the correct structure. So that must work. Great, great. Um, nice, very nice. Uh, da, da, da. I'll just try. Do you want me to just try pushing that change here through this interface and see if the CI repasses again, or do you want to do you want to go try it? I'm sorry. Do you want Do you want me to just commit that one line change of just returning the um, the path instead of the string to see if it works here by just running the CI and doing that one commit, or do you want to go uh, make the change yourself? Uh, it's fine by me anyway. Uh, okay. I mean, I can I can also go and make the change if you say so. Okay. Well, we I mean, let's just we can just try this. I think it should work. <laughs> Those famous last words, right? Um, but if not, we can just roll back. We can you can just you know get rid of this commit, right? Um, so cool. that way, hopefully, you, you don't have to go mess with it again, right? Uh, so I don't want to make. No reason to, to, to do this two places. Um, uh, return my path up to path rather than string. Okay. Let's see what the CI says, huh? <laughs> All right, okay. Um, and it was passing before that except for, um, was it passing before that? Uh, the Python one wasn't passing. The LGTM except one. Except for that, everything else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's just, that, that whole thing is confused. I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, okay, great. Um, let me just write that in a minute here. I wanted to, that one needs to get done here. Okay, so, uh, uh, cache download. Can we also uh, merge that uh, CSV delimiter? Here? Oh yeah, where'd that go? Um, let's see. Oh yeah, great. Oh yeah, this was, uh, weren't, weren't you working on that one file or what happened here? This came from, uh, this yeah. came from some weird file, right? Or... Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, wait. Okay. Where's the uh, this button? came up on the PR uh, on the use cases PR. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, great. Good. I didn't. I didn't see this one. I. I also uh, pushed uh, changes onto the use cases PR, and uh, all this left is I think to test it now. All right. Great. Um, so let's see. So which one was that? Uh, this one. Come on, can you show this new file? I love that I added support for this. This is great. Yeah, something went wrong. Asking me if something went wrong. It knows something went wrong. Come on now. Let's see. Okay. Um, what is that? I wonder what it's mad about. I wonder if we can see. Okay, maybe it doesn't like um, how many values it sees here. Okay. Um, oh, I can look at it through here. Okay, so we import stuff and we'll be able to cache download. All right, great. And then now you have cache download in here. Sweet. Okay. And then this is the one where it needs the, uh, um, it needs the, uh, okay. So, you know, it would be great if we could do uh, let's see. 
turn the CSV source delimiter. delimiter. Okay, and there you set the delimiter. And now you've got all the data. Great. All right, test train split. Uh, do you want me to show it as a file? Uh, that's okay. I can ask. So. Okay. Oh, and this is the this is the movement between models demo. That's right. Okay. We can probably get rid of this uh, warning stuff. Or well, wait a minute. Yeah, you can't. You're just running it. Never mind. Um, we need to get rid of that. That's a separate issue. I think we have it. Okay. So we got this. All right. And you have the features. Um, and you predict the quality. And you set the directory. Nice. And then you, let's see. All right, great, great. Here's accuracy. Okay. Oh, and I think we need to, we need to try, I need to try rebasing Sutanchi's accuracy stuff. I think we're pretty close on that. I think it's almost ready. Okay. And then we just got a bunch of, uh, a bunch of predictions here. Um, great. <clears throat> nice looking good looking good uh and then did you did you uh have you have you uh been able to uh look into the testing stuff more on this yeah i was waiting on the cached one uh, yeah i know how oh, to yeah, do it i have right. looked yeah i have found the libraries uh, as i mentioned in my proposal as well uh i'll get on to it now Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's right. That was the whole reason for that cache download stuff. Um, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me just... Nice, nice work. Thanks. Okay. Let me just... Let me also uh, check this. Okay. I need to create a reminder. Okay. Uh, one second, sorry. Uh, okay. So we went over this one. Um, we'll see about the CI. Okay, wait, this is not where I do this. Okay. And then this guy is looking good. Now it's unblocked based on the uh, test. So let's see. Was waiting on cache download. PR to unblock. Testing. Uh, we'll proceed with testing. Okay. Okay, then let's just double check the cache download stuff. Um, Oh, Jesus. Why is it doing it twice? Okay, whatever. Have fun, GitHub, if you insist. Um, okay. Okay, we'll just uh, wait, just in case. Um, so this one got merged. And... Uh, Uh, so we need to keep old path lib dot path return type. Um, other than that, looking good. Uh, waiting for CI to pass. Okay, great. Um, let's see what else have we got going on today. So. Um, Nitesh, what are you what have you been up to? Is that it on your end, Hashim? Yeah, my last PR um, regarding the concert. Uh, just a light reminder on the confidence PR. Oh yes, thank long, you. So uh, yes, right 
I know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Yes. Oh my gosh. There's just so I'm so behind. See, this no is this is why we need to get this other org going on. <laughs> um, okay. Great. Great. Yeah, that one is important. Um, let me put that in here. Yeah, this is long ago. Jesus, sorry. Uh, PR. Okay. Okay. Oops, what is this? Okay. All right, thanks. All right, sorry, Natasha. My last PR right regarding uh, the consolidated T async test cases. Oh yeah, great. Okay, yeah, let's see. So how is this going? Is it is it working now? Yep, all CI test cases are passed now. Yay, all right. Yep. Fantastic. Okay, man, we've been this has been on the on the list for a long time. Okay, XG boost, I'm betting this is just some kind of failure of the download. The, just a pre season did it. This is an accuracy thing. Yep. Yeah. This uh, or let's see. Uh, yeah, okay, accuracy. Okay, um, great. Great, 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 great. This is fantastic. Okay. So now everything, okay, great, and we have these guys in util, okay. async test case, oh, great, and now we have the stacks, okay, gosh, because this is such a pain, this is such a pain to have to do that, um, to create a new stack on everything, um, okay, fantastic, so, then did we, let's see, and you remove those classes, you remove that class, you remove that class. Great, 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 great. Um, async test case, async test case. Nice. Great, you got the setups. Awesome, awesome. Uh, looking good. Okay. All right, let's see. Okay. Uh, let's say these guys are all pretty much the same thing. Um, okay, wait, okay, okay, let me just see one second here. So, uh, where did that change go? Okay, wait. Um, so, I think, wait, what happened with this? Um, because this one, yeah. Why? Why did we? Why did we end up just making this repo root? Oh, because initially it was a, just a dot, right? And in a dot, the relative path to this repo root is not found. That's the basically issue. Okay. So I think issue. I think the the thing is that um, self dot package won't always be dot. 
Yeah. Um, sometimes it is like one of these model subdirectories. Um, I mean, ideally it will just be dot um, if we move to that second party plugin architecture. Um, but just in case we ever still have things, because right now we haven't moved that. Let's just make sure that it's the because we're not going to because it should be relative. Okay, self dot package repo root. You know what? What is really so? Is should it be relative to the repo root? Because if we end up making this, if we end up making this, um, I'm just thinking if we end up doing when we end up doing the second party plugin stuff, then it shouldn't be relative to repo root actually after all. Because if we're in a different directory. Then we won't want to. Uh, for, uh, I think I think for second party, uh, there's a test in a CI, right? And if it is passing, then it means it's it's working. Um, well, I'm saying when we go to do because this release automation um, will also work for you know it will be using this for the second party plugins as well. Um, what's the rest of this code? Okay, yeah, it, it checks the version. It checks on PyPy, it creates the archive, and it runs the upload. Um, so, and what is this? CD to directory. Um, what did, were we doing here? The name. Uh, where were we getting the name? Name. Okay, name so that we can check if it's on. Pi Pi. Okay. Um, that will probably need to change. Um, well, that'll still be in the plugins. Okay. Um, and maybe we should just throw away this whole thing um, and put this right in the CI as bash. Uh, let's see. Uh, the archive stuff is kind of useful. So, is, you see, do you see what I'm saying though? Because, do you see, do you understand what I'm saying? Does, did I, I'm not sure if I explained what I was trying to explain correctly. I was trying to say that, that right now what we have is this self.package.resolve, right? And, and this basically says, so if, if we're, this is relative to the current working directory. Um, and the current working directory, in this case, um, it used to be the root of the repo, right? And so dot meant, you know, the very, you know, the path above DFML here. Um, and if you pass like model scikit, it would go model scikit, right? Um, but if we just make it repo root, then it's always gonna be, you know, just DFML. So if I ran, if we had, DFML installed in the editable install mode, um, and we ran this from a from the if we ran this command from a uh, a plugin, the root of a plugin, and that was stored in a different repo. Like um, for example, uh, if we ran this from uh, uh, transformers, right? Um, it would end up actually just doing the release on the main package rather than transformers. Because repo root points at repo okay, root, so, yeah. So if, if I wanted to generate, regenerate this issue rights, then how can I do that? So the, the issue that you are talking about. Here, yeah, let's just... Okay, I posted this, all right. All right. Uh, 1070. All right. Uh, 
uh, let me comment this out so we don't actually do a release. <laughs> All right, so this is, you know, where it is right now. Um, oops. And let us not do that, because uh, that would be bad. <laughs> okay. So, and the other thing is it's going to it's gonna say that the version is already on PyPy. Um, now, actually, you know, this will tell us right away. So, do ML service dev release and then we say dot right and we're in you know model transformers so uh different oh is this uh five three seven It's not about git. Oh, because it tries to do... It tries to... It fails anyways. Okay, so I guess it fails for a different reason than I thought it was going to fail. Um, because... But but the point is the same, right? So it's it's pointing at... It's pointing at a different... It's pointing at the wrong place, right? So it's trying to say that, um, you know, this, this directory, which is not the one we just tried to release, is outside of the repository. Um, so if we had it as... You know, okay, let's see. You know, I think that it was right probably the way that it was. Um, so let's see. It's probably just should be path up, up you know, a path object to self dot package. Or let's see what was. Like what was it before? Yeah, self dot package to resolve. It might might have been right before, and I think we just might need to change the test case. Uh, log debug. So it says now it points to, okay, now it points to that, but relative to, okay, and see, now here it's trying to look up the name, and this is what we'll need to change when uh, when we go to actually do the other one. So, so the point being, right now, so if we were to do this, and here, let me go back to the main source. So this is the problem. This is the other problem that I was just talking about. Okay, so. Right now, log debug. Right, so this should do the release. Okay, well, obviously, yeah. Don't don't get mad about that. Then. This will try to do the release on on the main package, right? Um, okay. We have to delete all these checks. <laughs> um, so this will try to do the release on the main package, right? And. Uh, and then if we did, you know, if we passed like model scikit, uh, it would do a release on, on model scikit. Um, but if we had, uh, you know, if we if we had it like we had it, like we just had it here with repo root. Oops. Then you end up with uh, doing the release on the main package, see? So I think, I think it might just be best if we look at that test case um, and we just make it so that that test case does not change directory um, since it's meant to be run, since that command is meant to be run uh, from there. So we could just say... Um, where is this? So test on PyPy release dot, and then this one tries to test model scikit. Okay. Um, yeah, we might want to just do the because async test case now. Let's just see. So async test case now changes the directory. And so this is basically, this is part of what needs to change here um, when we do the second party ones. 
right? So, and I think part of this is right now we have, this is set up py. So this is the main package. And otherwise we have setup.config files. So model everywhere else is setup.config, right? Oops. Um, wait a minute. Okay, everywhere is setup.config. Okay, so um, so what are we doing? Okay, yeah, package name to directory. Okay, so what we need here really is um, this. We'll just put it to do on this that this needs to change. Uh, and let's put second party. So say if, if if we're hoping we we're hoping that the next release will be the one that we do second party plugins in, but if it's not, then you know this will break um, not having not having the path relative like this will break that. So let's just see. Let's just do for now. Um, in this test case, we won't. Um, we we will change directory back. To the to to the you know to the to our original location, um, let's see if we have the uh, do we have the root of the repo in here anywhere now? Um, all right, does that make sense? Yes. So here, yeah, because it's just, since this one is actually one that's meant to run, and part of the point of the, um, you know, part of the point of the, uh, um, uh, temporary directory is that it, it's supposed to uh, identify when, when test cases, um, you know, are written in such a way that they are dependent on the root of being in the root of the repo, because uh, most things will, most of the time when we run some of the functions and, and command line stuff and all the things we're trying to test, they probably aren't going to be in the root of the repo. Uh, therefore, we want to set up the test cases uh, in this way, like just like you did in this PR, such that they they, they catch it um, uh, because the, the, they'll just fail when they aren't in the root. And this one, I think we actually do want to be in the root, uh, which is the unique situation there. Um, and you know maybe we can just grab that uh, repo root um, uh, from uh, from service dev. So this should this should make it so that we're now in there. Uh, but I think I forgot to call super setup. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now. Hopefully, uh, okay. So now we should have the test case pass, and uh, and we should uh, and we should uh, be okay if we end up in a situation where uh, where we have to release before we get those second party plugins done. Okay, let's see. Well, let's look at this again. Um, all right. Okie dokie. <clears throat> let's just make sure that it goes there. All right. Um, so, anything else um, that that you've been working on, Natash? No, no. Let's see. Okay. And. What, what's left in a light TVM and it's two more. Yeah, okay, so what happened there? So I ran into something when I was doing that. So the H201, yeah. this one, what happened here? Let me look at the, the CI. So I remember I pushed it, everything looked like it worked, and then all of a sudden there was something weird happening. Um, or maybe I didn't push it, maybe it was, uh, oh yeah, it was in the docks here. 
something weird, you know, maybe we just need to rerun it, um, because it did this, which I could not find anywhere on the internet that knew what this was. Um, so this past, dis I think it has to do with the, I think it has to do with something related to like GBM got updated and, and it's, it's not, or some dependency, it looks like DAS, F FFS, FS spec. Um, which is using import lib metadata. Like it looks like maybe some kind of something somewhere might have a malform, a malformatted entry point. Um, this was a while ago. It, like none of this made sense, and it wasn't anywhere on the internet. So I kind of thought maybe we just leave it and, and try it later. And so now it's good you reminded. So we'll see. We'll see if maybe because sometimes this happens where somebody pushes something to one way sub dependency and it doesn't work for a while. So it might have sorted itself out, but we'll see because it doesn't make any sense um, because it, it passed the LightGBM build itself. Um, so it's only the docs build that failed and it seemed to be some kind of weird entry point load thing. So I'm not sure what could have been wrong there. You know, um, I don't think, I think it's some kind of dependency issue. So we'll see what it, what it says here. Um, uh, let's see, so... Uh, there was some kind of entry point dependency issue through Dask uh, that Um, that was an exception on load, uh, rerunning CI to see if it was a one-off. I think I tried to rerun it, but, um, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, so let's see. And what happened on H2O? Let's see, what were we looking at last time? Um, was this ready to go? So, okay, yeah, I think you just needed to maybe rerun the, um, the format formatting on that one it looks like that is just in need of a of a style update i think we forgot to write that in the meeting minutes i forgot to put that in sorry so let's see <clears throat> Did this fail oh this is console test why is console test failing oh because i'm currently re doing console tests is that why or what's going on here Test docs, test double context entry. Oh, it's mad about probably the Python installation. It looks like this worked. Let's just push this up. Right. Um, uh, package. All right. Uh, and then we'll check this out. Okay, it looks like that was, I don't know what, what that seems completely arbitrary to me, but okay. Um, I don't understand why it does that sometimes. Maybe the new release of black? Well, we have the release pinned, so I don't know why it would have changed it. Sometimes it just changes things like that. Um, it's a problem. That's one of the downsides of that black. Um, let's see. That was weird. Okay. Well, let's just hope that that works then. Um, okay. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Of course. So, let's see. So, let's see. Let's show. Something weird with black. 
reformatted. Okay. Um, and then we said consolidate systems, consolidate test cases. Um, so just needed to uh, keep release test service dev uh, in the repo root uh, as their current working directory. Okay. Um, anything else on your end? Uh, no. It's... That's it. All right, great. Yeah. And then, let's see, we have uh, uh, Cindy. Cindy, uh, how, how's things going with you? Uh, yeah, uh, I wanted to discuss about uh, two PRs. One was PR1031, uh, just like, uh, is it ready to be months now? Okay. And uh, another was some queries related to PR1090. Uh, okay. Um, let's see. So uh, what were those? What's the title of those for the notes uh, here? One, one was added a function uh, to split the data into end folds. That was 1090. And uh, replace master with main was 1031. Ah, okay. All right. Um, I think this one has a tag on it that says that it's on hold too. Um, yeah, waiting too much. Yeah, so, and I think I put a comment in here. So basically, and this is what I was talking about um, soon, we have Sudhanshu, so we'll look at that. Um, so this, yeah, we, we need, and this one, you know, in pressure put that on the issue itself but this one we still need to do um let's see we did phase seven so we're on to basically phase eight here right Sudhanshu? yes phase eight and this is all is it in accuracy staging i think it was paul yes i think that's a yes then okay or is it let's see um february 9th okay yeah that looks like all these branches are pointing at the same place so oh, let me just log again okay yeah so this looks like it's all in the same place so um Let's let's find out how this is going. Um, well, we'll find out in a second. Let's let's finish. Let's finish what we're doing here. Okay. So uh, and then the other one was um, uh, added a function to split the data. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's take check that out. I think I remember commenting back on that the other day. Okay. So and then let's see. Um, okay, great. Uh, actually, uh, for the, uh, for this part, like, uh, as you have mentioned that the uh, sources have an async records method and it yields one record at a time. So according to this fu function, uh, the things may pile up. This is the issue, right? Yeah. All the data may get piled up. So, uh, like my approach, uh, I thought that uh, I would go with this approach, uh, the similar one, uh, which uh, uh, was done in async uh, define accuracy method. Uh, so, I'm uh, thinking to go with that approach. Uh, so, is that approach okay? Uh, can you show me what you can you point me at what you're talking about? Uh, uh, yeah, so shall I share my screen? Uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, one second. All right. Uh, so yeah, I was the highlighted part. I'm uh, thinking to follow the similar approach. Well, okay. So, um, 
see, I don't, I don't, I don't think this is going to be very. So let's see. I don't think this is is exactly what you're looking for here. So I think that um, let's let's flip let's flip over to your code. Uh, okay. So, um, let's scroll down for a little bit. Okay, so you see you have, so you have fold size is, you know, lend data divided by the number of folds. Um, so we have, so here, there's an open issue to, to add the, um, to add the uh, length of a source to each source. Now, that's not, it's not going to be an entirely reliable thing um, because some sources are like streaming sources and so they don't they won't they won't know but some sources you know they will know how many records are in them um uh so let's see so you could use the sources dot dot length method and but you'd need to go complete let's see uh Okay, uh, let me just, I'm putting in the notes here. So, um, uh, okay, um, so, okay, fold. So, uh, you could use, um, and let me send the link to the docs here. So, if we look in, um, is it source, um, source, source, um, there should be, wait a minute, what happened to that? Um, did we not go do that? We should have, let me find the issue for you. Uh, issues. This was done, it was it was uh, sort of half, half, half done last GSOC. Um, let's see, uh, sources. Implement length method, here we go, 870. Um, okay, use source dot, so you could use source dot length, um, to get the length of a source, um, uh, shall I stop presenting myself? Uh, no, uh, go, keep, like, continue uh, presenting, continue um, okay. you can go to, you can continue presenting, um, so here, uh, and if you go to the Google Meet, I, I sent a link, uh, if you flip back, back to the Google Meet window, and then you can, you can check out the issue. All right, so, we um, we added this length property, um, and um, and we did. Let's see. Yeah, we need to implement within all the sources. I think those sources. Are... Okay. Yeah. So basically, you could use this if you wanted to do so with 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 the algorithm that you're using, right? If you want to know, if you want to split the data into into you know n mini and many um, uh, buckets, then you, you then you need to know the, the, the length of the source, right? And then you know how many buckets, right? So so if you want if you want to continue doing that way, you could use this dot length method, but then you'd have to go implement it off of off of you know you'd have to go implement it on every source, right? And the downside is some sources, since you you're in this streaming approach, um, uh, let me just write this down. So you need to do this first uh, if you want to know uh, the length of the source, uh, which is, or if you want to know how many records. Um, um, and so you could do this, or you could, you could, you know, slightly tweak things um and and basically accept you know the number the 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 number of records in a bucket instead right and which is this you know slightly different but um another option right um so so say 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 we have say say we've gone with either of those right and and so you could go either path right so you could you could go implement the length on all the sources which um uh, shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad um 
uh, it's another that would be completing this sh issue, right? And so basically, you just go implement that length method on every source uh, that we have right now. And, uh, you know, most of them, it, that would be, you know, relatively straightforward. Um, now, the the other option is that you just take, you know, how many records in, in that you want in a bucket as a parameter, right, instead of taking the number of buckets. Um, and so if, let's flip back to your code here. Um, which is now, you know, so you're taking fold size now instead of fold, right? That would be the other option here. Um, and then you can't, so let's see, sample the data, okay, let's see. So, all right, so then what you would do is you, okay, four is this, X, Chain range x. Okay, so you're selecting from the data. All right, so then what you could do is you could um, you could iterate over over the data, right itself. And the problem. So the one of the problems with this is, let's see, you could do some kind of. Okay, so if you shuffle it. Okay. If you don't shuffle it, let's say split data. Okay, and your split data is just, is all of the folds. Okay. So if you don't shuffle the data, this is this is easy enough, right? You basically just do an async for, um, just like you would do that with, with you slicing the, the calls to load and stuff, right? Where we do async for record in, you know, load source. Um, and you would be doing like sources.records or, or, or whatever, right? Um, and then you would just basically create your folds and you would append the, the pieces of data that you want, you know, to the fold. If you're shuffling it, then you'd need to work this a little bit differently and like maintain a little bit of a, uh, some kind of a, you'd need to maintain some kind of a, a cache. And then, you know, because you're iterating it over the data one by one. Um, and so you, if you wanted to like take chunks of it and, and put those, the, so split split data is your array of folds, and each fold has you know a, a chunk of data, right? And and you and if shuffle does shuffle does shuffle within this context, do you want that to mean um, that your the data within like all of the data is shuffled, or do you want that to mean let's see where's shuffle used? Actually, I'm thinking that if we are uh, okay, taking so have... out multiple reports, mm -hmm. so we can remove that shuffle thing because if they, we are taking out many records, so ultimately the data is not in a uh, sequential manner. Okay. Yeah, it looks like you're not using shuffle right now. So, you, and you could always worry about that later, right? So, I think you know your solution here is really. Um, iterate over, you know, async for records and in, in, in source dot records, right? Um, and and then the other thing that you need to do is, you know, you need to inherit from inherit from async test case um, and start using the DFFML APIs in the here, um, and then and you know start playing with with how that works um, when you're using the DFFML APIs, right? Um, and you're using an actual uh, a DFFML source, right? Uh, and you could play you could play with the you could you probably just want to do a memory source, um, and the memory source. Let's see. Yeah, the memory source is there's docs for that. Um, so if you just go source memory, um, there's the docs for that. Um, and you can see how to instantiate that. And you could, you could. There's quite a few test cases that that instantiate sort of like you know a random assortment of data in a memory source. And you can start playing with that. Do you have any other questions on this right now? Uh, no, that's it. Okay. Uh, Uh, shall I stop sharing now? Ah, uh, yeah. Unless you wanted to show anything else.
Oh, no. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, try instantiating a memory source. Um, there are some plenty of test cases that do this. Um, uh, iterate over for the records using async4. Um, and uh, since you didn't do shuffle, since you since we don't have shuffle now, since we weren't using shuffle, uh, we won't worry about it for now. Uh, but I'll put a note that you could use some kind of cache, uh, cache too. Uh, keep enough records to randomize. Okay. Um, all right. Anything else on your end there? Uh, no. Uh, my doubts are completed. All right. Great. Um, so uh, let's see here. Let's check in back with these guys. Um, So it did that, um, Hashim, did that cache download uh, CI run pass? Or did that screw things up? Uh, it's still running, but yeah, uh, for now, all the tests are passing, uh, at, uh, at least those that matter, I think. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> the, yeah. All right, yeah, it looks like, okay, yeah, and this one, it looks like this whole run passed, and... Yeah, okay, these ones, yeah, this should be the same thing, right? So let's just call this good. Um, yeah, I ran it locally as well, and no, uh, nothing pops up. Nice. All right. Great. Nice work. Okay, great. Nice. Um, and then this one, let's see if the CI passed on this. So how is it going with you, Sutanshu? So you, oh, and, and we wanted to figure out that merge command, right? Yes. Okay, let's pull that down and check that out. Uh, your screen is not shared. Oh, my screen is not shared. Thank you. Yes. I always forget. Uh, I just went ahead and I tried to uh, I tried to do the rebase here. <laughs> we did get we got some minor minor it looks like some minor things going on. Um, let's see. Uh, what PR is that? I scream demo. Uh, let's see. I meant the number, though. Let's see. Okay, that is PR number 1091. All right, great. Uh... And it was this one. Okay, and this is the this is the one we're having issues with, right? Yes. So in the uh, so the problem here is uh, we are not able to get the. So the fun. So when I so so we are not actually getting that a returned value from that. We are not actually able to dump that. Okay. Okay, and so it how? Is actually running. Oh, yeah. How are you? Uh, we don't have a test case for this yet, right? And we don't have a document. No, we don't have. Okay. A test case. Let's actually just go through and because you know this is a demo, so this is a good console test type thing. So examples, ice cream sales. And then let's also do docs. 
samples index. Sales. All right. All right. So uh, let's uh, walk walk me through what we're doing here. So what do we do first? Okay. So so uh, we have actually three methods. Uh, one is for getting the temperature, one is for getting the population, and uh, one is for getting the sales. Okay. So, uh, so uh, there is this uh, create command, which will actually create a data flow source uh, from the data set. So I have actually created a data set in the CSV format, and I've actually pushed it. Uh, okay, I saw that, yeah. In between. Yes. So the data flow create command will actually create the data flow for it. Okay. And it will actually call the uh, the the three methods uh, to get the uh, values uh, of the temperature, population, and the sales. Okay. And then I have this merge command. So this merge command will actually. Uh, so we have this data set. We have this create command. So it will run the create command no we will actually generate a a, a data flow G, dot yeah. JSON data flow from the create command yes and we will run that using the uh, the, the data set we have mm -hmm. and uh whatever like values we are getting we we will have to like we will have to dump them to a different csv source yeah so that's what we are doing. But okay. yes, the problem here is we are not actually able to dump the values which are returning from the from the methods. Okay. Okay. Yes. So and so this so basically you should end up with these values here. Um in the these should be the columns in this CSV file that we have, but we're not getting yes. that. Okay. Yes. Um and let's see. So and and this is the same thing, but just in Python, right? Or let's see, this yes. is the operations, and then you also have the same thing with the data flow in Python. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Um, I get log. One second. I get log. Okay. Let me just do. Okay. Uh, wait. I wanted to know what files changed. I know there's a way to do this. Okay. Uh, all right. Whatever. Get all right. So, operations data flow. Data set and preprocessing. Okay. Oops. So these are the files that we're working with. So first we're going to do operations, then we create the data flow. Or so first we're going to say, here's the data set. And then we're going to say, here are the operations, and then here's the preprocessing stuff. Okay. Okay. Are we writing a console test here? I am, yes. I'm trying to make okay. sure that this, <laughs> I'm doubly doing it so that we make sure that it works here. So, so basically we should do, okay, no such file to write out because this is dot, 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 dot. This, this is relative to the docs. All right. Uh, docs. Wait. Docs. Examples. Examples. Data flow. Ice cream set. Uh, oh. Yeah. Sorry. All right. <clears throat> There we go. All right. 
So we've got a temporary directory with all these files. Um, and now we want to say, okay, run that command or run these commands. So uh, code block console test. And so first we run the data flow command. Um, actually, let's actually put that in, or well, we'll just run it right now. Uh, for now, we'll run it from the sh file, but then we'll put it in the uh, we'll put it in the um, we'll put it directly in here. Um, we can put it there. Actually, here I can show that. So basically, what we would want to do is probably read uh, data flow. This game sales data flow, um, and then we should be able to put this in here. Okay, and we should do but the same thing. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> and then we need to do the same thing here. So, and this is pre-process. And the other thing that I'm not sure if this was an issue, but you see you have a trailing backslash at the end of the file. Um, we will just put this in another code block and see what happens here. So process. Sometimes this, like, see the tra trailing backslash, sometimes this throws things off, sometimes mm -hmm. it doesn't. I don't think it would. Um, Oh yeah, so it's mad. Oh, oh, processing. Okay, so this is the merge command. All right, so it looks like it's running. It's running. It's right downloading stuff. So it looked like that backslash didn't matter at all then. Um, okay, let me add a log debug. And we won't run this for a second just to... Um, so this should be in... Oh, well, now it's going to be... So dataset.csv. So we'll just cat the file when we're done here. And I threw the debug logging on there. All right. <clears throat> all right, it's looking it up. All right, so it's doing all the operations. So that's good news, right? We're running the operations. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, and they're in the file now, but they're not, it's the same data is what you're saying basically, right? Dataset.cc, actually, uh, Oh, that was the input. The, the file where it is dumping, it, I think it's a different file. Okay, yeah, oops, my bad, um, um, preprocess.csv. Oops, all right, um, yeah, preprocess.csv, okay, so, and generate sales. Okay, so and then we've got the sales and pre-processed. Okay, saved 84 records. So, um, and I'm actually gonna, we'll just cut some of that data short. Um, let's see, let's cut some of that data short so that we're not um, data flow. So we don't run quite as long. Um, I'll just I'll, re, I'll reset these changes later. Um, let's just do one record. Okay, so uh, stupid tag. Okay, um, 
didn't mean to get rid of the tag. Okay, um, turned out not to be as good of an idea as we thought it was. Okay, um, so yeah, so so clearly the, the records don't have temperature, population, and sales. Um, so let's take a look at the um, what is I think Sakshan had done the the Flower Seventeen demo that uses the data flow preprocessing source. So let's take a look at what he did there as as our example. Um, so, so, examples, okay, and this is just a data flow, all right, okay, so that's not really what we're interested in. Um, so let's take a look at the train. So what does he do here for the data flow preprocessing source? Okay. Sources, images. No, that's not where he uses it. Okay. Um, let's see. No, NLP uses it. Okay. Wait, this is using it. The okay, images. Okay, so okay. Source. This is configuring the source. Images features. Oops. Okay, so feed source temp features. Oh, let's see. Okay, so I think, oh, here's what it is, I think, is this should be actually be source text, because this is the output features here. Or wait, now it's not happy with us, because it looks like he has source images features, and that looks like maybe, or wait, source images features. No, this is the data that we're this is no yeah you know you've already got that that's the data that we're pulling so i don't think data flow features okay and what is so basically it's whatever the output of the data flow is becomes the features so i don't think we need these um and then what is the output of the data flow so Um, so there are like three outputs. Uh, uh, there is this temperature, population, and sales. Ah, uh, okay. So I think, I think that's probably what's going on here. Is that, um, okay? Generate sales, look at population. Okay, but we didn't have, we don't have an output operation in here. Um, so oh. we probably need. So you want, we want, um, so we want, yeah, let's, let's grab those, let's grab those operations read. Okay. Um, where was that? That's in examples, data flow, ice cream operations. So our outputs are just like, okay, they're just auto deft. Okay, so there are auto deft outputs on all these, so it would just be um, look up temperature, look up operation, and generate sales. So, so we'll just grab. It should just be operations. So dot because they only have one output and they're auto deft. Outputs that result, right? Uh, okay. Right, because you have, um, because we need. I think. I think what's going on here is that we do an update. Let's look at the code to be sure. Um. But we basically want to make this get single, uh, or what is this, get single spec, uh, right? Because this is the input 
get single spec is the, the definition of the input to the get single operation. Um, so if we put this, and I think I copy pasted this, right? So I should be able to do this. Um, uh, get single. Oh, wait, don't pipe it to get single. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Oh, this is the input to get single, and this is seed. So, It's a seed input. So we have a seed input of this value, or like for get single spec, we seed it with this value. Uh, sorry, uh, this is an array, right? Okay, yeah, get single spec. Too many values to unpack. Data flow, split dot separated. Um, here, let me just look because I'm clearly not. I'm clearly not seeing something here. Um, Result equals get single spec. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay, I see what's going on. Result is get single spec. Uh, so we should just be saying, this should say that we want the Okay, yeah, these are saying select from seed input city month state. Okay, so that's and this says this says the get single spec. Let me look let me look further before I, I it's obviously it's not working. This says okay, so these guys here's a good example. Oh, Get single spec, oh, and this is a rename example. So outputs result, and this says just grab the result of that. Okay, so that is get single spec. <clears throat> so what's it mad about? It's mad about split dot separated. CLI data flow run. Oh, wait. Okay, let's look at the command that's getting run. So the command that's getting run says operations look up temperature result. Look at temperature, temperature. And we're adding, so we're adding a new input of type get single spec. And we're saying that the value is this array. And the array should be, you know, the results of. Let's see, do we reference them? Yeah, we reference them by their operations colon thing here. Um, I'm pretty sure, let's just go look at the um, the data flow source real quick. I know the problem is not there, but just to confirm that we're doing the right thing here. Because we should basically take, yeah, so we basically, we run the data flow and we update the, the record with whatever the results from the data flow were. And right now we're not getting any results out of the data flow because we don't have an, an output operation. So if we can add the output operation, then 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 it seems like, and I believe this will work. Um, but uh, I think I have the syntax slightly wrong here somehow. Um, so let's see, either that or it's a console test problem. So I might try to run it without console test. Um, Let's see, we wrote it. 
uh, could be a console test problem. This is why I was trying to do it with console test. <laughs> Probably one, do one thing at a time, all right? Uh, let's see. Some data flow. And let's just see what happens if we do this in data flow. Okay. Examples. Examples, data flow. Ice cream, data flow. Alright, that works if we leave it off, so I have some kind of syntax error here. Um, operations. Let's try it like this. Seed. Yeah, wait a minute. I think I'm thinking about this wrong. Okay, wait. So this says, these lines say, from seed, except city, except the definition of city as, and what does the data flow look like? Um, so the data flow looks like this. And so what do we have? So we have city, month, state. Yeah, city, month, state. And so, okay, the definitions, definitions are month, population, temperature, city, state. Okay, month does inputs there. And we've said, accept city, month, state as your, you know, so what we said was in city, we said, let's see. We said for your input of temperature, let's see, where is it? Um, yeah, for lookup population, city, we should accept definitions that match, that are coming from seed, the seed origin. Um, city, the, here's the list of definitions that we should accept from the seed origin for the city input of lookup, of lookup population. And so then when you add it, yeah, so when you've added your docs, examples, ice cream sales. So when you say here, features, city, state, month, so that reads from the, basically anything from that CSV file. Uh, so it'll, it'll pass that city, state, month columns. They turn into the city, state, month definitions, which you, mm -hmm. you've got that correct here. Um, and then, so let's see, what does this input generate sales? Um, population, okay, and this is linked to the other, so these guys are correctly linked to the other outputs. So then, so get single, I, I'm screwing something up with get single, right? So mm -hmm. what we're saying for get single is that the spec, wait a minute, no, we were, this is, this is, wait, this is the flow. Oh, this is what's going on. I'm adding this in the flow. Okay, that makes way more sense now. So I'm adding this in flow, and I should not be doing that. Um, so I should be adding this in the inputs. Uh, it's like something doesn't make sense here. I'm not modifying the flow. I'm adding an input, right? Um, <laughs> okay, that makes way more sense. I was starting to get concerned. I'm like, what? what's going on here? I'm trying to add an input, but I'm not adding an input. I'm modifying the flow. All right, okay. All right, let's see. Definition lot of context. Okay, so we ran get single operation. So now get single ran and it says look at temperature outputs result, look up population outputs result, generate sales outputs results. And it's mad because it says operation look up temperature outputs result. Or is it results with an S? Let's see. So Um, let's check the f data flow and generate sales outputs. Oh, outputs sales, outputs temperature. Uh, 
Okay, so these outputs are not results. Okay. Oops. Let's read that data flow in here again. Um, okay. So So the results are, so the output type, these operations, they output population. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we really want to select operations, look up temperature, outputs, temperature. So we want to select um, population or sales. population and oh I screwed that up okay uh, temperature all right there we go now we got it nice all right so we just needed to add the add the output operation this happens to me frequently um we should probably be doing something um, we should probably do something that when we run a data flow or we load a data flow that doesn't have an output operation in it we should print some kind of warning because i've had this happen to me a million times too um, i forget that i need to to actually select which outputs i i care about um well now it works great um so good status and check out now let's just check out the data set and run the whole thing Okay, so our modifications were basically add an input. Okay, and we need to change that. So, um, let's see. So and now and now you now we've got the skeleton for the tutorial here. Um, so, and we'll make sure that whole thing runs. Um, so and we, also an example for console test. Uh, an example for console. Yeah, exactly right. Um, sweet. Okay, and I, I think I think let's see. So and this is the way that I was running this. Let's see. Okay, great. And it I got all of them. Awesome. Um, so this is the way that I was running this. Um, and this is I'll just put this in. This is see I use that Node Mon tool. Um, I I love that thing. Um, Okay, we're only slightly over time for what ended up being. It's always it's, it's always things I was just complaining to my I was complaining the other day that uh, uh, that uh, so this will basically says reload on any changes to Python shell files or CSV files. Um, And uh, then you know, run that, run that demo. Um, I was complaining the other day that the that the worst things are like spelling mistakes and stuff like that, and 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 like we just spent so much time trying to modify the flow, and we weren't trying to modify the flow; we we're trying to add an input. So you know, a good a good output of or a good output of this as a as the side note is let's just make an issue to say um, we should at least print a warning. Um, because this is this is something I've run into a lot of times. So, so let's say df memory, or, or maybe this should we do it? We should probably do it on. Um, yeah, we should do it on when we try to run the data flow. Because if we instantiate a data flow, we might you know call dot update and, and add an output operation to it. So let's say uh, log warning when trying to run a data flow without an output operation. It's an easy one to miss. Um, all right. Great. Cool. Um, sweet. Good stuff. Good stuff. It's uh, it's fun to see fun to see your uh, your progress on that ice cream demo because that's something that we've been talking about for a long time. Um, 
and uh, like I said, I'll I'll check out the. I started to try to merge the or uh, rebase the um, uh, the um, accuracy the stuff. Accuracy. And, yeah, it looks like I ran into a few conflicts, but I'll, I'll just. I, I don't think there should be too many conflicts. I'll try to squash those and let you know um, when when I've pushed it. I'll push it back to that accuracy staging branch. Um, and 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 uh, I think you there's just a couple things to update at the end of that, right? Yes, phase it will start. All right, yes. that'll be great. I think that should be good time. Hopefully, with the um, um, uh, hopefully when we get those second party plugins um going, then we can have uh, we can we can coincide that um for a uh. I, I mean, we'll probably do 4.1 first and then, you know, but beta will probably be soon. All right. So ice cream sales demo uh, found we were missing a output operation. Um, oh, you know, and, and what else it's going to, it's going to get mad about this too. So let's just add this. Um, Cause we have, a, oh, we have something that's going to yell at us for, not adding the demo with the console test to this list here. So where's that? Um, ice cream sales. All right, okay, now this should, uh, so I'll just add this docs examples, ice cream sales and get add, add a GitHub. Uh -uh. Uh, start on docs. Oh no, no! Oh crap! I added everything. Uh, I did a. Okay, damn it. Um, all right, I'll do this. I won't take any more of you guys' time. I'll do this. And I'll push this up right now. So, anything else from anyone? Um, that's it from my side. Thank you. Cool. Oh, uh, one one more thing, John. From my yeah. Side. Uh, the CI is taking too much time to start. I don't know why, but. Let's see which pull request is was this on? It's just in general. Yeah, it does seem to be lagging. Yeah, it's H two O, and I think uh, there is a conflict in async test case consolidate the test cases. Oh, and that's probably because we merged the cache download stuff. Let's see. Yeah. Um, oh, that's annoying. Um, gotta hit that. Uh, Let's see, ResNet. What did we touch in ResNet? Oh, it must be cache download. I just said that. All right. Um, can you fix that conflict and and push it up? Uh, so. Okay. It should just it should be probably a simple conflict um, to fix with the. It's probably just you know some similar lines changed around a setup function. So just make sure that we're we're doing here. I, I we can. What is this? Um, right, so this is how GHPR checkout, this is how we would fix the conflict, just, just so that people can see. So fetch origin. Alright, so rebase. And where, where is the, there's no conflict. What is it talking about? What? It's okay. In, oh. It's, it's in oh. Ah, okay. Oh, I grabbed the one that was auto merged. Okay. Yeah. So basically, oops. Um, yeah, right. So the weight is the syntax that we want. Right, so, oh, and it looks like, you know, so we, we want async test case, right? So, there we go, conflict solved. All right, so async test case and await, perfect. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Oh, yeah, thanks. Bye.